thank you for coming today. You know, your presence just means uh, just everything to this family. It, isn't this a beautiful family? I've had, I've had a ball hanging out with Jim's grandkids this morning. They've been in and out of my office. I got them hopped up on candy, so they, they're going to make it through the duration of this, and I know you will too. I also want to say thank you and bless you uh, for those of you who are watching online uh, the service. I know there's some people all the way across the big pond watching, watching this today, and we know you're grieving right along with all of us today. If I could say one thing that you could get a hold of right now um, to this family, I promise you, I assure you that the Lord is with you today. He is near. He stands beside you. He, uh, he grieves with you. His heart hurts just like your heart hurts today. He feels your sorrow. Here's what the Bible says. This, those aren't my words. This is what the Bible says. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. So let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Let's do that right now. Let's, let's bow our hearts and pray for God's presence to be with us today. Lord, we do exactly what that scripture says, and we come boldly to the throne of grace today on behalf of Jim's family and this great host of friends. We need you. We need your reassuring, comforting presence. And we thank you, Lord, that that as that passage says, you're not a God that's way up there in the sky, far removed from what's going on. You're right here with us. And just as you stood at the graveside weeping with the sisters of Lazarus, uh, you stand alongside us today and you weep with us. I, I pray that as we remember Jim today, I pray that there will be joy and celebration in our hearts as we reflect on not just the memories, but also your goodness and your blessing on his life. And we have prayed all this in the name of Jesus and God's people said, amen. We've come here today to uh, remember and to celebrate uh, a man that's touched our lives in so many ways. We're here to give thanks to, to God uh, for every good memory for every treasured and blessed moment that we shared with Jim. We're also here to, to grieve. The Bible says to weep with those who weep. And so we're here to weep with you today and share in your sorrow. Um, I, I don't think that, well, I know this. Jim would not want this to be a starchy, sad, uh, solemn service. And uh, I think he would want us to relax, uh, to be ourselves, and uh, to remember the happy times, to cry if we feel like crying, to, to laugh if we feel like laughing. And so I'll make, I'll make a deal with you. I promise to be me if you'll just promise to be you. Is that a deal? <laughs> My name is Mark. Everybody say hi, Mark. Hi. I just turned this into an AA meeting all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wanted you to know me if you didn't know me. Uh, <laughs> I've had the privilege of being Jim's pastor a long time. Somewhere along the way, uh, uh, that, that's my wife Mary over there. Mary and I became friends with Jim and Kathy. And uh, <clears throat> in, his, in his book, have you read his book? The price just went up on these, by the way. <laughs> Inflation, <laughs> value, <laughs> uh, this is a treasure, and I'm glad he wrote this. What, I, I, wish, I wish anything, I'd have, of course my, my grandpa's couldn't read or write, so that wouldn't have been possible, but uh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm from West Virginia, I don't want to offend anybody, but, uh, <laughs> uh, which is really funny because uh, it, it, Jim asked me to edit this book, okay? Now think about that, a, a hillbilly from West Virginia uh, editing a book from a boy from, a farm boy from Northwest Oklahoma. Uh, 
my wife likened it to a scene from the movie Dumb and Dumber. <laughs> well, we got her done. <laughs> I'm not sure which one of us was Lloyd and which one of us was Harry, but, uh, but what a treasure this is now. And uh, our, our friendship evolved. It started in this church, but uh, our daughters are about the same age. I had all girls. He, he had a couple of boys in the mix, but I had all daughters. And, and so Ashley and Chelsea, were, they were kind of like extra kids at our house. They were, they were over for slumber parties and all those little things that little girls do together. And uh, Jason and Cody, where's Cody? Oh, yeah. I'd had you boys over, but I was a minority in a sorority house. I, I, didn't, I didn't have a vote, but you would have been welcome. You know that. But, and then Jim and Kathy were, were like an extra set of parents to our girls. <laughs> and so there's more than just somebody's getting a phone call. Go ahead and get that real quick. <laughs> and the rest of you turn yours off, would you? <laughs> <laughs> But Jim and I had a lot in common. Uh, we like to eat, and we like to hunt and fish. Uh, we like to eat. Did I already say that? <laughs> uh, and uh, a lot of people thought we favored one another. Uh, we'd, we'd go out for lunch or breakfast, and somebody, the people would, you all nodding your head like, yeah, he's, he's and uh, they'd say, you brothers. And uh, he would say, it. no, he's just a brother from another mother. And uh, I guess it's our natural uh, movie star good looks and, and, our, and our muscular builds that were similar. That <laughs> uh, One summer evening, uh, Jim, uh, now one thing, one thing I should I make this clear, we had so much in common, but one thing we did not have in common was a love for his dog, Annie. <laughs> did anybody meet Annie? Okay. Uh, Annie, Annie made the obituary, I don't know, but, and, and is labeled as Jim's beloved dog, Annie, okay? Annie was not beloved by me. And, and I'll tell you why. One, one summer evening, uh, Jim and Kathy invited Mary and I over for, for a little cookout, and uh, <laughs> the family already, they hear this train coming. Well, I, I, no more than I got up on the back porch, Annie, little, little dachshund, okay? Annie jumps up and bites me in the bottom <laughs> and would not let go. I mean, <laughs> Annie bit me in the fanny. I just tell it like it is, okay? And so she's hanging. I wish you could get the picture of this. All four legs are up off, little legs are up off of the ground and she's got a hot hold of my hand quarters and she is shaking her head <laughs> like she's a crocodile and I'm a wildebeest, you know? And she is not letting go. And she shakes her head until she pulls my pants down. <laughs> Am I making this up? <laughs> and there, <laughs> there I stood in my tidy waddies, <laughs> looking like a fool with my pants on the ground. <laughs> Kathy is still in therapy. <laughs> I'm sorry you had to see all of that but that's friendship at its best. I've had a lot of stories uh, hunting and fishing, but uh, a jun Junior, uh, he, he, I mean, this, this story has become legendary, and I'll, I'll just tell it from my viewpoint, but one of my most memorable hunting trips of all times was with Jim. We were up around Visai, and we were going to go hunting turkey in the morning, and then we were going to fish some ponds in the afternoon. And uh, Jim had an Argo, and he was just amazing how that guy would get along, get around. And, and in that Argo, I mean, there wasn't nothing stopping us, and he did everything. That's what I love about the guy. He never let anything hinder him. He did what he wanted to do. And so we're, we set up before daylight, and uh, I had a decoy, and I started calling. And the toms were, were gobbling, but they got hung up on a creek, and we couldn't get them a come across that creek to get in gun rage and so I said Jim we're going to have to uh I'm going to grab the decoy and we're just going to have to make a big circle and kind of wait this out and get over there because they're not they're going to cross that creek and so I go out there to get my decoy and I, I grab it and I'm headed back to the Argo and, and Jim's going and he starts pointing it and, I, and I'm I'm afraid to turn around because I'm afraid it's Annie <laughs> 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 I have PTSD from that little dog. <laughs> and he's going, pss, pss, 
And so I, I turn around, and, it's a, and this is Jake, okay, if you're not familiar with it. Jake is like a teenage uh, boy turkey, okay, and he's looking for love, okay. And, and he's running, running after this decoy that I've picked up. I mean, I, this is his last prospect for love. And, and Jim is just cracking up, and all of a sudden, this Jake starts flogging my de- I, It's in my hand. And this, and this Jake is flogging this decoy and, and flogging me. And I, I literally had to kick this. I've never seen anything like it in my life. I had to kick it off. And when I look back, Jim had fallen out of the Argo laughing. <laughs> and so now I got to get him loaded back up in the Argo. So we make a big circle and we, we set up over this, this wheat field. And I, I set up again, we backed that Argo up into to, to a line of cedar trees. And we settled down and I start calling again. I don't know, there's, this, this decoy I had must have been something else because all of a sudden this bobcat starts slipping up on this decoy looking for a light snack. And Jim says, I'm going to shoot it, I'm going to shoot it. I said, well, pop him. And so Jim takes aim and shoots right underneath this bobcat and the bobcat jumps straight up in the air and when it lands it looks right at us in the Argo like which one of you boys just shot at me? Well I pointed at Jim. (laughs) And with my hand up, I'm a preacher, I'm not gonna lie now, with my hand up, this bobcat starts running right at us like it's, it's going to eat us up. And I'm, I'm like the guy on Swamp People. Shoot him! Shoot him! <laughs> and, and, and he's fiddling around. His gun jams. And so I had to jump up in a hurry. I'm serious. This thing was going to jump up in the middle of us. And, and so I had to put a quick end to it. And uh, Crawford had the service and everything. It was a wonderful thing. <laughs> It's not the end of the story. There's a lot more of the story. But when I, when I, when I stood up, uh, I, you should know, my, people know me, I'm blind in my left eye. When I stood up, a cedar limb scratched my cornea. And so now I am blind. Are you getting the picture of that? A blind guy out in the middle of nowhere hunting with a guy in a wheelchair. We were quite the pair, but we... We got out of it. It was like uh, Dumb and Dumber Part Two. <laughs> There's so much more that I, to the story that I could share, but I, I better cut this off. Uh, I tell my people my sermons are like baloney. I can slice them off anywhere I want to. So, uh, but uh, I want we're going to hear some stories from you in a little bit. But but you know, <laughs> sometimes preachers struggle to find the right words to say at a funeral. It's not the case today. I'm, I'm trying to figure out what not to say, what to leave out. It's easy for me to talk about Jim. Mary and I love Jim. We love this family. He was my friend. But in all honesty, nothing really needs to be said today because his life said everything. His life said it all. His life spoke volumes about his commitment to Jesus and his love for the church. I, a pastor could not find any better churchman than Jim Young. He served this church so well and with his numbers brain, he was so helpful as a board member and helping us with budgets. And I see our old child, our young child, our, our child care director, Margaret, uh, she's back there and she knows how valuable Jim was to, to those operations. And everybody in this church, we're gonna miss Jim. Uh, Over there in the second service, there's going to be a really big void in that corner where he sat with his family every Sunday. uh, It was obvious about his love for Christ and and the church. His his life clearly spoke volumes about his love for Kathy and his deep devotion to his children and all ten of these grandchildren. It was uh, one of the most beautiful scenes I've witnessed as a pastor in Jim's last moments to see Kathy and the girls on one side of his bed and the boys on the other side of the bed holding his hand, speaking words of comfort to him as they watched their daddy and their husband take his last breath. There was was a special, it was just a sacred moment. 
If you were a friend of Jim's, I don't have to tell you what a trusted and loyal friend he was. You, you knew. I think, I think this is the right verse for me to share with you today, and, and then I'll, I'll conclude. 2 Timothy 4. I have fought a good fight, <laughs> Paul said to young Timothy. I have fought a good fight. Jim fought like everything for his family. He fought the good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. And I know for a fact that Jim kept the faith right to the end. Henceforth, here's the wonderful news, henceforth, there is laid up for Jim a crown of righteousness. Amen, church? Amen. <laughs> Jim fought a good fight, and, and I want you to know he won that fight. Some of you might be scratching your head and saying, no, wait a minute, he, he died. He won. He won. We lost. <laughs> We lost a good friend. We lost a good church member. Kathy lost a good husband. These kids lost a good daddy. The grandchildren lost. Brothers and sisters. So, so many of us lost, but I'm here to declare on God's word today that Jim won. The Apostle Paul said in another time, for me to live is Christ, but to die is gain. <laughs> it's a win-win situation. <laughs> Jesus said this. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Say amen, church. Amen. amen. I want to invite a, another dear friend of, of uh, Jim's, Junior Salisbury. He's going to come. Just, uh, hang, just put your trays in the upright position and buckle your seat belts. And <laughs> Junior, come on down. And, and then we're going to invite you to share any memories that you might have as well.